Mother Domitile. How Heaven Sees the Catholics and Protestants Among Other Things Brothers and Sisters, the testimony that we are going to read is that of Mother Domitile, of Congolese nationality, the one who was dead, remained in Hades for four days. Coming back to life, she shares with us what she saw and heard in the afterlife, a testimony that was recorded on a cassette tape in a Congolese dialect. Care was taken to translate it into French and now into English. This testimony tells us first of all the life led by Mother Domitile before her death, then comes. Secondly, her message from beyond the grave. For me, the Lord has done a lot of wonders. Everything he showed me, I find myself in the obligation to transmit it to you. It should be noted that it would be difficult for me to recount everything I had seen and heard. However, I will give you the most essential points. Before getting to the heart of the matter, let me first tell you in a few words what was my life. Before death Born into a Catholic family and raised in its spiritual atmosphere, I contracted my religious marriage in April 1968. My husband and I loved the Catholic religion very much. I devoted most of my time to prayer each day. I have seen many sects arise and I have never had the desire to leave my favorite religion from birth. One day, when I was resting in my room, sitting on a lounge chair, I felt sleepy, it is during this sleep that my story begins in my dream. When I was asleep, in my dream, I heard someone knock on the door and asked me to open it because he wanted to talk to me. I ran to open the door. When I got to the door, the person said to me, Wait, you mustn't open. You are in a hurry to open. Is your house clean so that I come and talk with you? I looked all around me, I noticed that my house was full of dirt. There was sand, dust, debris from bottles, and water on the floor. Seeing all this dirt, I said, Yes, indeed, my house is very dirty. The person tells me, I am very clean, I cannot go into a house that is in poor condition, therefore. I must return, but I leave you a biblical reference to read 1 Peter 4 6, for for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. When he left, I immediately woke up from my sleep. I looked from left to right, I didn't see anyone. I was amazed. Then I went out hoping to see the one who spoke to me, but saw no one. I thought a lot and had enough worry about the impurity of my house seen during my dream. I could neither read nor write. I went to see my neighbor who used to read the Bible to tell him about my dream and ask him to read me the Bible reference that was given to me. After I had told him everything, my neighbor said to me, The house you saw is not the one you live in now but it is your heart. The filth you saw is your sins. I said to him, but I am a child of God, every day I pray and I confess my sins when I have offended God or my neighbor, why did this man tell me that? I left my neighbor to go home very sad. When I got home, I tried to do the housework, but I couldn't do it anymore. I went back to my room to pray and took my rosary. I went through it all but no consolation. I went out to continue my work, but still felt uncomfortable. I went back to my room to pray, I took my rosary again and I began to pray. Immediately I started to cry as I brought out words that I had never used in my prayer and I said, O oh God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, help me, have mercy on my sins. I remained in prayer for a long time. It was at that precise moment, during this prayer that I was filled with the Holy Spirit, and I began, through the intermediary of the Holy Spirit, to discover many things. I started to cry as I brought out words that I never used in my prayer and I said, O oh God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, help me, have mercy on my sins. I even discovered the difference between the one who received the baptism in the Holy Spirit and the 
one who did not. To him who do not have the Holy Spirit, it is not given to him to discern his sins. He is incapable of distinguishing between the good to be done and the bad to be avoided. While the one who has it recognizes himself as a sinner each time he has committed the sin and immediately asks the Lord for forgiveness with firm conviction not to start over again. When I had not yet had the Holy Spirit, I believed in seeking the truth and being without sin. When I got the Holy Spirit, he revealed to me the best way to get forgiveness from God. God's forgiveness is never obtained by always going to a priest to confess his sins to start again. The next day, but the true forgiveness of God is obtained by one who, with great regret, sincerely confesses his sins with a firm resolution not to repeat them. In my case, when the Holy Spirit revealed to me that I was a sinner, I implored God for the forgiveness of all my sins, and since that day, I had the peace of heart that I sought so long. I felt quite light and my relationship with God was sincere. One day I went to the Catholic Church to pray with the other faithful. During the prayer, the Holy Spirit revealed to me the problem of each member of the group who was in prayer. At the end of the prayer, I told each one their problem as the Holy Spirit had told me. All without exception, doubted and told me that the Holy Spirit only existed in the time of the Apostles and that what is in me is not the Holy Spirit, but the presence of a demon. To drive out this demon, they said, I needed exorcism at all costs. They asked me to kneel down in order to pray over myself and perform ablution with holy water. The Holy Spirit said to me, You must not accept their proposal. If you accept it, you will fall back into your former state of sin. I returned home very happy, without worry or sadness. But when I got home, I informed my husband that I was definitively expelled from the Catholic Church and he expressed his dissatisfaction by telling me, we got married in the Catholic Church and we have to stay there. I am very unhappy with what happened and I have no reason to support you or keep you in my house. But the only thing I ask you is to pack your bags and get out of here. I started to pack my suitcase, because for me it was better to leave my husband than to abandon the way of God. On the verge of leaving the marital home, I first prayed to the Lord to entrust this situation to him, but I was surprised by the Lord's response, you must not leave the house. Stay here because your husband will accept me. I obeyed the order given by the Lord and I stayed with my husband. However, my relationship with my husband was going from bad to worse. My husband persecuted me a lot. Despite this cross, I still prayed for his conversion, and my prayer was answered by God because his conversion was realized and he was in turn excommunicated from the Catholic Church. When we were both expelled from the Catholic Church, we went to the Protestants. They made us feel welcome and we began to pray with them. One day the Protestant pastor announced that all newcomers should be baptized. My husband and I told the pastor that we have already been baptized among Catholics and that it is not normal to be baptized twice. He replied, Our baptism is different from that which you received among Catholics, if you refuse it, you will no longer be part of our religion. We were kicked out, because to us to receive baptism twice was a sin before the Lord. When we returned home, we prayed, saying, Lord, tell us what we're going to do. They Protestants have kicked us out because we refused their baptism. Now Lord, what do we do? When we were praying at home, a great event had taken place in the Catholic Church. The Holy Spirit had descended on certain faithful of this church and they were in turn driven out of the Catholic community. We heard the news and all those who were fired came to join us, and we formed, not a religion but a large prayer group. The priests followed everything we did and out of jealousy, they even brought us to justice saying that our group is not religious, but an association of rebels erected against political authority. From this accusation, we were suspected by the 
security agents and everything we did was followed by the police. As for us, we retired together into the bush to pray, asking the Lord to show us what we should do. During a week of prayer, we received no answer from the Lord. The majority of our group became discouraged and returned to their homes. We remained at the number of twelve people, eight men and four women with the decision to continue the prayer until the Lord tells us what to do. If the Lord does not answer us, we will stay here without eating and drinking, we will never go home. Eight men and four women with the decision to continue the prayer until the Lord tells us what to do. We continued our prayer for two days, and on the third day, during prayer, a fabulous event happened, that of my death. I was neither sick nor felt the need for any medical care, I was in good health. When we were praying, my death arose, I saw two people coming towards me. They were very large, very bright, dressed in white. I was scared and they looked very similar, they were neither black nor white. When they approached us, they came to stop next to me. I wanted to run away, but I held back and opened my eyes, intending to see them with my physical eyes. I did not see them. Then I closed my eyes again to continue the prayer and I saw them again, this time closer to me. Suddenly, they touched me to say, get up and let's go. They had a very beautiful voice and were full of pity. Every time I tried to stand up to go with them, I felt very heavy as an ox, and I had said to them, I really want to go with you, but why am I so heavy? They came back to me and took off something heavy in the shape of a jacket. This thing fell to the ground and instantly I felt light and left with them. When this thing in the shape of a jacket fell off, those who were praying with me saw me, and I fell and I was dead at the same time. I didn't know that by taking this stuff off I was going to die. On the road, when I went with them, what impressed me a lot was the metamorphosis my body had experienced. I found that my body had become very beautiful and looked like their bodies. I was very surprised and I told them, so such a beautiful body exists. While on earth, we have a very bad body. They laughed a lot and said to me, why are you saying crazy things? Your words denounce that you are not used to reading the Bible. I replied, I do not know how to read. Moreover on earth within our religion, we were not used to reading the Bible. They said to me, it is true, and added, know well that if someone does not read the Bible, even if he is a long-time Christian, very intelligent, he cannot know the secrets of God. If you used to read the Bible, you would know what 1 Corinthians 15:40 says, there are also celestial bodies, and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. We continued and we went to a very beautiful city. In the latter, some things were like that of my land, but there was a very big difference in many other things. As I approached this city, I saw a great light and our bodies became even more beautiful than before. I tried to look back where we left, I saw everything was dark as night. And I said, addressing those who were with me, when we left the earth there was sun but where does this darkness come from? They told me, this darkness is because the earth is invaded by evil. Directly I thought of my friends with whom I prayed. I asked those who were escorting me to return with me to earth so that I could seek my friends in order to bring them out of this darkness. They laughed at me and said, when we see people on earth singing, dancing, playing and laughing, it makes us feel sorry. On earth, you believe that you are in the light, but we, we see you in the darkness. If you now have seen this darkness, it is because you came here. A few moments later, I saw a car coming with three people on board. Astonished, I told them. Ah! Here there are also cars like the ones on earth. They told me, this car is the one that shuttles between heaven and earth to transport people. Whom you on earth consider dead. 
it is a car that only transports saints, Christians, those who died. In a state of holiness, that is to say in a state of purity, it never takes the pagans, those who are in sins. I said to them, I am a Christian, baptized, why am I not transported in this car? They told me, this car cannot transport, on the one hand, a sinner like you, and on the other hand, you have not yet finished your earthly stay. You did not come here definitively, you must return to the earth, to your country. When they spoke to me, the car passed us and they said to me, you see these three people who are in this car, are those who died on earth without sins and whom the messenger of God went to look for. Where the car is headed, I heard people singing with beautiful voices. I asked, who are these people who sing so well like that? They said to me, these are the people of this country, they sing to welcome the newcomers. Who were in the car? I said to them, let's hurry so that they come and sing for me too. They told me, you, even if you run, they can never sing for you because you were not transported in the car. It doesn't matter. I said to them, let's go quickly so I can go see them and listen to the songs they are singing. We ran a few meters from this place, I saw a large country that had no beginning or end. Which looked like the most beautiful cities on earth. They told me, the country you see is what you call on earth, paradise. Those who enter into it are only those who die in a state of purity. They come to rest here. I said, at least run faster for us to stay fit. But when we arrived at the entrance to the country and when I wanted to go in, those who were with me crossed my path, saying, wait here. Outside, where I was stopped, I saw someone, in the middle of this country, coming towards us. He was quite a large and very tall person, I could not see the limit of his width or that of his length. He came to a stop in front of me and started to cry. He had cried a little too much, and the tears that flowed were like big drops of rain. After that he addressed me saying, I saw you on earth praying insistently. If you used to pray, like you have been doing lately, you should always keep in touch with us. I said to him, so when we pray on earth, our prayer reaches you. You heard us. Yes he answered. And I asked him, but you, who are you? He laughed and said, you, you have no right to ask me who I am. I changed the conversion and I said to him, when we have prayed on earth for more than a week, why didn't God answer us? He answered me with another question, why don't you want to be baptized? I told him, we are already baptized. He asked me, what baptism did you receive? I replied, the priest who baptized us had taken a little water in a cup and poured it three times over the heads of each of us, saying, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. With this act of baptism, people become Christians and have accepted Christ as Savior. Do you know how our Lord Jesus Christ was baptized? I told him, I know Jesus Christ was baptized but it's how the baptism was administered that I don't know. He said to me, Our Lord Jesus Christ was baptized in the Jordan, in the middle of a great river. Baptism by Immersion If anyone wants to follow him, let him do the same baptism as he. If we received the baptism by the three drops of water poured on the head, our Lord Jesus Christ could have for his baptism, make John Baptist come to the house so that he takes a little water in order to baptize him, but our Lord Jesus Christ who knew the effectiveness of baptism by immersion, went into the wilderness, far from the city to join John the Baptist at the Jordan to receive this baptism. Domitile, to become a child of God and for prayer to be answered, it is necessary at all costs to receive baptism by immersion. After this long explanation, he showed me two large groups of men that we have on earth, Catholics and Protestants. He said to me, on earth, you call them that. Do you think God needs your names? God is not 
concerned with your names. He looks at the Christian, the one who has accepted the Lord. Jesus Christ and who has assigned himself the duty not to commit sins. When I looked at the group of Catholics, I saw that they were many and all praying together. In my heart, I was very happy and said to myself, there are many of them. They get along well and pray together, I was very proud. But suddenly, I saw people coming with large luggage at their heads. Each one puts down their luggage on the ground and laid down next to their luggage. And I asked, you told me that. These people are the Catholics who come to pray, but why, each one carries a baggage. He said to me, it is the Catholics who come to pray. The luggage they carry is beer, cigarettes, lies, theft, murder. I said to him, so this baggage is sins before God. He said to me, from today, I teach you by my own mouth, know that no thief, that no liar, that... No alcoholic can see God. I told him, Our Lord Jesus Christ at the Cana marriage turned water into wine, the people drank it and were happy with it. But why now is drinking alcohol a sin before God? He took great pity on me and said, Do you know the work of the drunk man? His job is sin, that is to say, He who finishes drinking will sin. But when our Lord, Jesus Christ, turned water into wine, among the wedding guests who drank it, how many people were intoxicated with this wine? I replied, I don't know. He said to me, listen, if anyone on earth wants to commit sin, let him commit it alone, according to his own will, but never say that our Lord Jesus Christ has done this or that. Because the water that Jesus had transformed into wine, is none other than the sweet drink, a sweet wine. Anyone who takes it cannot be drunk. Besides all the guests who were at the wedding in Cana, when they drank it, they were all very happy, very happy, instead of committing sins, they praised God. So, our Lord Jesus Christ did not make a wine that could intoxicate, but a sweet wine that arouses joy. After that I noticed some of the Protestants were also carrying luggage. And I said to him, but among the Protestants, some also wore something, it is forbidden to drink alcohol and smoke. Why do some of them also have baggage like Catholics? He said to me, first of all, you must know that there are two very different things, to follow God and to follow a church. To follow God is to practice his word, while following a church, it is to respect the church's laws purely and simply. The laws of a church are not those of God. For example, two Christians, one Protestant, the other Catholic, if the Catholic performs an act, drinking alcohol, that the Protestant considers a sin, the Catholic will tell him, drinking alcohol is not a sin, and the act as such is not condemned by our church. This is what I call following a church instead of following the word of God. Here in heaven, we are ignoring your churches, but what matters to us is to follow the Holy Christ. Then, he allowed me to enter the interior of this beautiful country. It was large. I saw a lot of people, all happy. They praised the Lord. He said to me, look at this beautiful country. All those you see here are Christians, saints, without sins who die every day with you. It is in this country that they come to rest, but a sinner cannot come in. When he spoke to me, I said to myself in my heart, Today I want to meet all of my deceased family members, all people of all colors and genders, black, white, men, women. But I saw something extraordinary, they all had the same face, looked alike and were in uniform. There was no man, no woman, no black, no white no taller, no smaller. Knowing my thoughts in advance, the person said to me, don't be mistaken in your thoughts. Here in this country, there is no diversity of colors, sexes, sizes, everyone is the same. If anyone dies on earth, whether black or white, male or female, 
large or small, before arriving here, the life. He lives on earth, sets him apart from others in order to carry a body of above, a celestial body. In this beautiful country where these holy souls live, it is a temporary place. These souls wait for the last day of judgment to enter the eternal home which is the heavenly Jerusalem, a place of great perpetual joys. Now he said, I want to show where the sinners are, those who die in a state of sins. We came to a place where there was a large swamp in which the water was the color of blood. And on the other side of that swamp was a lot of people crying, scratching all over the place and some beating themselves all the time. When I saw them, I started to cry too. The person who was with me said to me, You must not cry, because what is important is to give up sins and to accept Christ as personal Savior. When he spoke to me, I heard these people lament, saying, Great God, it is good to take us out of this place and throw ourselves into the fire so that we are completely consumed rather than endure such suffering. The person said to me, Listen to the tears of liars. They think that one day they will be thrown into the fire where their bodies will experience complete ruin. They think this would be a utopia. What is certain is that all will be cast into the eternal fire, their bodies will be burned but not annihilated. It will be continual suffering, more excruciating than what they are currently undergoing. Catholics say, when one of us dies, we say the Requiem Mass, we pray for the forgiveness of his sins and his entrance to paradise. He said to me, in which biblical passage is this procedure mentioned? I replied, I do not know how to read the Bible but what I do know is that on earth, within the Catholic Church, this procedure is vigorously respected. He said to me, this procedure is false, it is not biblical. Anyone who practices it is in error, for forgiveness and sanctification are only obtained on earth and not in heaven. Man, whatever sins he has committed, if he sincerely asks God for forgiveness, while he is still on earth, forgiveness will be granted to him without any further trial. But if he has not confessed his sins on earth, with a firm resolution not to start over again when he dies in this state of sins, even if his brothers and sisters pray from morning to night, ask for masses for ten years, forgiveness will not be granted. He died a sinner and he will remain a sinner to occupy the place reserved for sinners. Afterward, he showed me the fire, and he said to me, Here is the fire that you call hell. I saw a large well in which I saw certain things having the shape of barrels. He said to me, These barrels that you have just seen are intended to preserve the fire. This fire is not yet working, but it exists. No sinner has ever been thrown in, for the time has not yet come. Presently, as you have seen all sinners endure their sufferings outside this fire, they too are waiting for the last day when the saints will enter the heavenly Jerusalem, that is when they will also enter this fire for eternity. He said to me, Take this pebble, throw it in the well and you will see what will happen. When I threw this pebble, I heard a loud violent noise which was more than a violent thunder of rain. I ran and fell, panicked. I thought I was engulfed by this monstrous fire and I cried a lot. The person said to me, when you have been told to pray, not to commit sins, you say that these are stories. And yet God has even made pastors and evangelists available to you, some come from afar to preach his word to you. You refuse what they tell you and you remain in evil. So you, from that day on, saw with your own eyes, heard with your own ears, if you continue to live on earth in sins, the fire awaits you here. After these words, he took me to a place where there were only children. I saw many children. Among them, some were very happy, they played, clapped their hands and blessed the Lord. But others were sad, their arms crossed. I asked, why are some happy and others sad? He said to me, those who are sad are those who were killed by certain people on earth. Among 
them are those their mothers killed by induced abortion, others were killed in war or by satanic sacrifices, etc. For these different cases, each child holds in his hand the object that his assassin used to exterminate him from the earth. If you have killed twenty children, these children are waiting for you here with the instrument you used to kill them. If you have, through medicine, aborted a one-month pregnancy, know that you have killed a child, he is waiting for you here. On the last day, everyone will see anyone to whom they have rendered either a good service or a bad service. After this instruction, he took me to a place where there were many files. He said to me, this is where we record every act performed by each person from birth to death. In this place, there were also two ways. One leads into the fire and the other to heaven. Anyone, Christian or pagan, who dies on earth must first pass here. When you get here if you don't know how to read, you will begin to read properly as those who have attended school do. If you are blind, your eyes will be open to see and read your deeds on earth. It is from acts performed on earth that one is either condemned or justified, condemned for eternal fire and justified for eternal glory. I, who could not read, when I came to this place, I started to read and I saw my file in front of me, which was marked Mom and Amidial. In the following pages, I saw everything I did and said on the land from my birth until the last day I followed these people. I followed my life story the same way we follow a movie on a TV screen. All the words that each of us says and all that each of us does are well recorded and well photographed. The one who lies, who steals, who commits adultery, etc. will be seen doing his act. That is to say that everything we do is materialized by supporting evidence. When I saw everything I had done, I felt ashamed and started to turn my eyes away so I could no longer see my sins by looking either down, up, left or right. But every time I did this, I would see the images of my sins wherever I directed my eyes. I started to cry. The person told me, on this earth, you cannot hide anything from God. Everything is seen and recorded here. Anyone who seeks to commit sins in hiding, at night or in the dark, let them know that everything is seen here. Everyone has their own file which records everything they do. I asked, Behold, all my sins are recorded here, you have seen them and you keep them, now. What must I do to be granted forgiveness of these sins? He told me, God's forgiveness is only obtained on earth. Here, we expect two things. Condemnation or justification, misfortune or happiness. I cried as I begged him to send me back to earth to sincerely ask forgiveness for my many sins. When I begged him, he showed me the earth. The latter was in total darkness. And I saw in the midst of this darkness beasts walking in the mud, eating garbage, making noise and fighting. He asked me, what do you see in the midst of this darkness? I replied, I see beasts in the form of pigs. He said to me, they are not pigs, but they are men. Those who are not Christians, they are like pigs on earth. A pagan, even if he eats well, dresses better and occupies an important social rank on earth, he looks like a pig, he has no value before God. Still in that darkness, he showed me something out of the way that looked like the skin of an ox. And it already gave off a bad smell. He asked me, what is it? I said to him, it's an ox skin. He said to me, no, it's not the skin of an ox, but rather your body. I was very amazed to see how my body had become and he said to me, and yet you haven't even been here for a week, but have you seen how your body has become? On earth, you eat well, you dress better, you jealously maintain your bodies, you believe yourself to be worthy beings, but you have seen what your body becomes a few days after death. It is good and better to heal your souls which will last for eternity than to ceaselessly take care of your bodies which are dust. Now that we have shown you everything, 
when you are on earth, take all possible care to pass on what you have seen to others, you should not keep everything you have heard and seen here to yourself. After this advice, he told the angels to return me to earth. In my heart, I longed to return to earth to go and confess my countless sins, but seeing the darkness, the evil that invaded the earth, I did not want to return. I said, please let me live with you. I have no desire to return to earth. They refused and forced me to take back my body and return to earth. When I arrived on earth, I sneezed and asked for water to wash myself. Since that day, I made the resolution not to commit any more sins and I began to sincerely ask God for forgiveness for all my sins already committed. When I see someone who is in the process of committing sin, it pities me and my heart hurts. Since he does not know what awaits him in the hereafter. Finally, what I can ask you is to accept the Lord Jesus in your life, and to stop committing sins. So that one day we all find joy with our God. Each of us has our file up there, where everything is recorded. On the last day, what will be our fate after judgment? Condemnation or justification, one of the two anyway.